Hi everyone, I wanted to talk to you about some items in courses and updates. So I know that if we were at the home page of our Schoology, we would see all of our courses and pretty much all of the things upcoming, quizzes, there's a quiz icon, calendar icon, assignment icon, that sort of thing. But once you get into a course, I'm gonna click on courses and I'm actually going to go to an archived course to show you. So let me get in here to archived and wait for this to load. And I'm going to go down to a course um, that I have a lot of updates in. So in your courses, I always like to give them a picture so you can edit this picture. You can hover on this and upload the picture you want. And you're going to notice I have this white box for me to type, but I also allowed students to type. So if you want to allow students to be able to post things to your course, remember it is our class. It's not just my class. And hopefully you have mature students. Um, I went in here and I allowed all members to post course updates and I allowed all members to comment on course updates. Normally I turn this off and then I always set the default landing page to updates. Um, the actual default is materials, which is all of the folders, but I just preferred updates, so I changed it um, to that. And so mainly if you think about Facebook and how people get on Facebook and they post something, let me go back to this class, then like right now I can go up and I can post something. Maybe I have a really important announcement so I'm going to type really important announcement and I want to show you something else. If I wanted to have a link to this really important announcement, if I go here, um, that actually is not going to stay in announcements if I go in and actually make this an announcement. But if I go to insert comment and I click link, let me go ahead and grab a URL really quickly. So I have gone to the internet and I have found something I want to alert people to. I'm going to click insert and that's clickable now. So my classes are linked. If I only want one class to see this, I can turn these off. I can post all sorts of files. I know I was going to show you about announcements, but I can post anything that is in my laptop basically. Um, with the file. I can put a link here. I can have things imported from my resources. I could do an audio video recording. I could give a poll. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click post and I want you to notice something. If this was a really important announcement, I probably should have made it bold and changed the font size if that were the case. So I went in and I hit post and it says a really important announcement and then this is clickable. Now if I had done it this way, it would not have shown up up here because I, I tried that a month ago and it didn't work. Now everyone can be excited and see what the really important announcement is. It's taking them to the really important announcement. And the announcement is how to get free pizza. So what I liked about this was if I go to materials, it actually stays up here as well. So let's say you wanted to have a Google Meet nickname announcement and you wanted it above all of your materials, you would have to go into updates to do that, but then it will show up in both updates and announcements. So what you'll notice here is it's also going to be just a regular update. And then um, I had, whoops, I didn't mean to click on that. That was the end of school. So I just wrote a general note to the class and because they're linked, it goes to my second, my third, and my sixth. It only shows up for the students one time. Since I opened up the ability for students to post course updates, this student posted her assignment for the whole class to see and um, they can like it, they can comment on it. Now this is me posting to the class. Generally what I did was I would say the dates of the information and then I would put in um, any links, PDFs, anything like that. Here's a student posting to the class. 
and let's go down. You can see Erica posted and these students replied to her post, just like you might see in Facebook. I'm going to go ahead and click more. And down here, while Riley was there, he decided he needed to go ahead and ask the class um, what the best Pop-Tart flavor was. And the only choices are cookies and cream. So then he got some feedback on his poll. And so they just had a little bit of fun. But Riley really did do his work. And there it is for everybody to see. And here are some serious academic comments about it. So that was good. So this is how I like to post things because I felt like for any document that I had, I wanted to also give the directions. Now, a lot of us actually use materials for this, but I did want to point out if you post anything, um, let me scroll back up to the top. If you post anything, then the students should be alerted that there's a new update. So if they're in materials, because that is the default landing page, um, whenever there's a new one, see I'd already clicked on mine, they'll get a number there. So you may want to just point out they need to look at that. Now while we're um, basically going just down the, the left here, we do have a grade book. So I'm going to click on the grade book and just show this for just a second. I don't want to get into too much here, but um, you can see that I do have some grades. I can look at this by just Q3. You can filter things out, and you'll notice that was when we had the polar vortex, and I have a lot of E-Day attendance quizzes here. So if for any reason I just wanted to see um, just those attendance quizzes, I could sort by quiz and take a look at those, or I could sort by, or, um, sort by projects if I had projects. So here's a project, and these mean someone actually turned in an actual document. Um, and if it's a quiz, you'll see the little quiz icon there. So setting up your grade book is um, going to be pretty easy. You'll have um, the decision to make some categories. So you can click Add. And I have a lot of categories already. And you can make one default so that that's the thing that always shows up when you make a um, an assignment. So let's say that this is going to be something that I don't already have. I'm going to write presentation. You'll also have to add this to PowerSchool, but you can see I just added presentation, so now it's there. Generally, you're supposed to be clicking default grading scale, and gradebook scale should be default, not numeric, and you can hide this gradebook because this gradebook doesn't really matter. Um, Power School is the final authority on our grade setup. Um, if you deal with standards, you can get into mastery and badges. And I think new this year is attendance. Let's go ahead and click on members. And you'll see I have these students. And what's interesting is they're the only names that I have. I don't have any other names associated. Let's see. What I was trying to find was it doesn't look like any parents have joined the class. Let me take it one more look. Okay, I went to a different class to show you. You'll notice here we have the student name and then we have another name. And if I go down a little bit, we have this name and this name. This means a parent has used that join code to see what is available on their student Schoology course. You can see that if we go over to a student's name and we go to the drop down, we could send a message from here, see what the course looks like to that student. You don't want to make a student an admin. And I don't think you'll ever need to unenroll someone because PowerSchool will generally take care of that. Now, while we're here, let's go underneath this one and click Analytics. This is something that Jamie Pomisol, um helped us out with last spring. She sent out a message that told us we could see what our students were doing on Schoology. So I'm going to sort just by a section. I'm going to go to um, I'm going to go ahead and do section three, and I can do this right now. I have A, B, B, so it looks like it's in alphabetical order. And if I go over here, I can sort by the last time they were on Schoology. But what you'll probably want to know is when was the last time they were on my actual course page. So we can see 
Um, the student was here Sunday the 23rd, so I think that was over a week ago. Some students um, last week, and then you have these students were on here yesterday. The other thing that's pretty interesting is you can see the total time spent. So let's say I just organized that, I just clicked that arrow, and now you see that this student was on here for a minute. If I go all the way down here, this student was on here for 37 minutes. So I'm wondering if you asked them to open up a document and read it, and you thought that document might take 20 minutes to read. Well, this student, you know, obviously is in a good zone for that. But when you go back to these students, perhaps they didn't read that article. So that's just an interesting thing to look at. And I'd like to um, thank Jamie again for finding that for us. Just moving down um, along the left here, this is something I don't think a lot of us have actually gone into and looked at, and that's workload planning. So if I'm planning to make a big, huge project due or a big test, you can look to see what else is going on in the um, student's world with their other classes. So if I wanted to have a big test last Friday, I could see that pretty much every student in my course already had several items to deal with. In fact, this student had nine things to deal with, and you can see what they were, something for early childhood, and let me go down, um, a quiz, something for world history, something for geometry. Here's your assignment icon, there's your quiz icon. So sometimes when our students say, oh, but I already have so many things, I'm not saying you have to change your plans. I did just want to alert your attention. You can go in and look. So maybe you decide, okay, let's see if I can move that big project or that quiz to next week. Now you can see the students don't have as much on their plate as they did last week, but I'm sure this will start to fill up. So just something interesting to consider. Um, I'm not going to talk about Fun Brain or this or this since we're going all Google and PowerSchool will have to be basically um, tied to your what you have in your grade set up on Schoology and what you have set up in PowerSchool itself. So let me see what will load up for us here. So you can see we actually successfully sent these grades and I'd be happy to help you um, set everything up. But what you have to do is you have to go into configuration automatically shorten your assignment titles and whatever Schoology course categories you made, click this drop down arrow and pick the one that's going to match a power school category. So obviously classwork to classwork um, will work for that one and then daily questions will go to daily questions for this one and so on and you'll have to save these changes. So um, if you've linked your courses, I'm going to alert your attention up here to that tiny drop down um, this shows up everywhere for linked courses and um, something that's not yet synced generally means the teacher still needs to work on grading something. You'll press this button to go to um, PowerSchool when you're ready and you can see we have three successes in a row. This probably needs graded and then we have these successes and I'd be happy to help you with this. Uh, best practice is that you should be syncing grade by grade, not going to the grade book and doing it. That is just way too much data and too many things um, going back and forth. Something could get messed up. So you do want to take advantage of doing um, what you have graded in Schoology. We'll go to PowerSchool. So I'm just clicking on a different class right here. And you can see now we're in third period, whereas a minute ago we were in first period. So these were successful, and now all those things are in PowerSchool. Something that's pretty nice is if you want to know what things look like to your students, you could do that. Because these courses are linked, these come up for every single class before you see a different update. But if you go over to Course Options, you can view course as a student. I'm just going to pick the very first one and give that a second. So this tells you this is how it looks, and you can see there's just been these two updates, and right now there are no upcoming assignments or events. I'm going to go back to course to view as a teacher. And something you may not have messed much with um, is you can switch over to different courses by clicking this. Um, any of the courses you teach, if you want to just get right to them, you can click this. But while I'm here, I'll just alert you once again. Do try to take care of notifications. 
I believe that these might be the same ones I talked about in my other video where I said to go up into settings and to change your notifications. But if for whatever reason um, you haven't dealt with notifications, you want to make sure you're only probably getting them for comments on your posts or a message. Make sure they're not on for assignments or test quizzes or your inbox will be flooded. So let's see what it looks like going to another class. I'll go ahead and pick Spanish this time. So notice I didn't have to go over to courses and then click the courses, but this is just a taking me right to another course and there I can see the updates. So I hope this was helpful for you. Join me next time when I deal with materials.